Okay. <laughs> Um, we usually think that our health is governed by our own choices and our own genetics. But today I'm going to be talking about how uh, trillions of tiny organisms living inside of us actually play a huge role in our physical and even mental health. The microbiome is the genetic material of all of the organisms that live on and in us. It's mostly made of bacteria, but also includes viruses, archaea, and fungi. Just like the Earth has a lot of different environments where different plants and animals live, uh, our body has a lot of environments where different types of microbes live. Microbes have colonized the entire surface of our skin, even the surface of our eyes. They live in our nose and mouth, our throat and lungs, and throughout our entire digestive tract. Even though microbes are probably important in all of the human systems in which they're found, uh, the one I'm going to be talking about today is the gut microbiome, simply because that's the one we know the most about. We have trillions, if not hundreds of trillions of microbes and thousands of different species. This is the equivalent of carrying around uh, a small dog with us all the time. We have about two to six pounds. We usually think that microbes are gross and disease-causing, and sometimes they are. But our gut microbes are really important in helping us be healthy. Gut microbes help us to, to digest our food. They produce vitamin B and vitamin K. And especially in infancy, they're really important for helping our immune system develop properly. In fact, notobiotic or microbe-free mice are actually much less healthy than mice that were raised in, with a normal complement of microbes. The problem is we don't really know what a healthy microbiome should look like even though we know that having a healthy microbiome is important for being a healthy person. Uh, this is a chart where different colors represent different species of microbes uh, from the guts of people living in different places in the world. Even though these are all from healthy people, we can see that the composition of their gut microbiome actually varies quite a lot. And so a healthy microbiome is probably different for everyone. So we do know that a healthy microbiome is diverse and balanced. But sometimes, potentially harmful species can take over, producing an imbalance or dysbiosis. There are a lot of disorders associated with dysbiosis, including gut disorders like irritable bowel, but also psychiatric disorders like depression and neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's. <laughs> um, so if we know uh, that an imbalance of microbes um, can predispose us to certain diseases. Can we manipulate our microbes to treat disease? And it's possible. I think we're getting there. The problem is, like I said, we have thousands of different microbes, and we don't really know what they all do. Probably the more we learn about the role of each species of microbes, the more we'll be able to manipulate them to treat or prevent disease. So, uh, you've probably heard that probiotics are good for you, uh, like these women really enjoying their yogurt. <laughs> And the good news is, is that some cases, probiotics actually are really helpful. Um, there's good evidence that they're helpful in treating uh, gut disorders like irritable bowel and ulcerative colitis. And although the study of probiotics and mental health is still in its infancy, uh, there's at least one study showing that probiotics can be helpful in treating depression. The problem is, not all probiotics are created equal. Uh, and in fact, how a probiotic is classified is really important. If a probiotic is classified as a drug, it comes under strict FDA regulation and has to be proven safe and effective before it can be sold to you. But if it's a dietary supplement, it just has to be generally accepted as safe and doesn't have to be proven effective at all. So be careful what you're spending your money on. Um, so probably the absolute coolest part of manipulating the microbiome is the story of fecal transplants and C. diff. C. diff is a potentially fatal bacterial infection that actually kills about 15,000 people a year in the United States alone. It's highly resistant to antibiotics. But the super cool thing is, is that if fecal bacteria is transplanted from a healthy donor into someone with C. diff, it cures them about 90% of the time in cases where antibiotics have already failed. So that's a pretty miraculous life-saving treatment for a lot of people. All right, um, so if you like learning about the human body and how we're all really gross and have weird diseases, uh, check out my podcast. It's called The Hypochondriac's Guide, and it's available on iTunes. Thanks for coming.
Thank you.